Welcome to day 17 of the 40 days of preparation. This week we're focusing on being filled with the Spirit. And today I want to highlight John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples and, and I'm going to read to you from the New King James Version. Jesus says this, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Now, Jesus is preparing to go to his Father, and so he is giving his disciples instructions. And this particular instruction, he says, there are two things that I'm assuring you will take place in your life because I'm going to the Father. Number one, he says, I am assuring you that you will be able to do the same works that I have done. The works that I did, Jesus said, you will do also. So what were those works? Well, Jesus preached the gospel with authority. He healed the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He raised the dead. He cast out demons. And Jesus is saying to them, I assure you, you will be able to do the same works that I've done. But number two, he says to them, because I go to my father, I can assure you that you will also be able to do greater works. Isn't that interesting? Now, if this wasn't Jesus saying it, I wouldn't even think it could possibly be true that we could do greater works. But what does greater mean? Well, for example, uh, greater in nature. Remember that in Acts 5.15, Peter's shadow healed people. We know that Jesus' ministry, his hem, the hem of his garment healed some people. But in Peter's life, it was the shadow of his passing that healed people. So it was greater in nature, but also greater in the quantity of miracles. Why? Because there would be multitudes of disciples doing these works for ages to come and everywhere in the world. Now, Jesus gave the reason for this assurance. He said, the reason why this is going to take place is because I go to my father. Well, what, what does that mean? In John chapter 16, 7, Jesus tells his disciples that it is actually to their advantage that he go away to the father. Again, if Jesus didn't say it, I wouldn't believe it. He said to them, it is better for you that I don't stay here it is better for you that I actually go back to the Father. It is better for the purposes of God to reach the world that I don't stay here, but that I go back to the Father. So why did he say that? Well, do you remember that in, uh, in Acts 8, Jesus told his disciples, wait, wait for the, for the promise to be sent to you? Who's he talking about? He's talking about the Holy Spirit. See, when Jesus returned to the Father, he would send the Holy Spirit. That's what he said. When I go to the Father, I will send you the Holy Spirit. So that's why in Acts 1.8, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will come, but you will receive power when he comes upon you. Well, is that same Holy Spirit that filled Jesus? I know you know this, but I, I pray today that you would catch this in your spirit. The same Holy Spirit that filled Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that led Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that empowered Jesus to do these works is the same Holy Spirit, he said, would fill us so that we could do what Jesus uh, did and we could do greater works so that we could be led by the Holy Spirit. This is important. The Spirit in you is no less than the Spirit uh, was in Christ. It is the same Holy Spirit. Christ's work when he left was not supposed to decrease or diminish. It was actually supposed to greatly increase. Well, no wonder Jesus said this was the best strategy for him to return to the Father. You see, Jesus was fruitful. We would say very fruitful through the power of the Holy Spirit working inside of him. But he was now moving into exponential multiplication because the same Holy Spirit now would be working through multiplied disciples. What it, would this mean? It would mean that more people would come to Jesus. It would mean that more people would be set free, that more lives would be restored, that more captives would understand what liberty is, that more bodies would be healed. See, the plan of Jesus was, I will go to the Father and I will send you the promise of the Holy Spirit so that what I've done here in three years in one region can multiply through many everywhere. So what does this mean to you and to, and to me today? It means a lot. It means that you and I are being beckoned by the Holy Spirit. You're, we're actually being beckoned by our Lord to be continuously full and filled 
by the Holy Spirit, continuously filled with the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus was. Jesus lived full of the Holy Spirit. You and I are called to live full of the Holy Spirit. Why? So we can be led by the Holy Spirit, but so that we can also be empowered by the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus was. We are not meant to live average lives and do average works. We have been called to declare who God is boldly, but not only to declare, we've been called to demonstrate who God is everywhere we go. We have been summoned to be filled every moment of our lives by the very Spirit of God so that we can display the immense love of God for all people and walk in His boundless power. This is God's plan for every believer. This is God's plan for you, and this is God's plan for me. If you've been uncertain of what God's will is for you, then I want to assure you that His will includes you doing the works that Jesus did. Absolutely includes you doing the works that Jesus did, and it absolutely includes you doing even greater than what Jesus did. It includes you leading many people to Christ. It includes you discipling many. It includes you restoring many, setting many captives free, and healing many sick, not by your own might, not by your own power, all of it by the power of the Holy Spirit that abides and dwells in you. You know, I hesitated whether or not to use that word many, but I could hear, I could sense, that's a better word, I could sense the heart of God saying, no, 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 it is my will that through every believer who is full of the Holy Spirit, many people will be impacted. So don't you dare undermine your ability to reach many. You may not reach the thousands, some of you will, some of you may reach the millions, but many is more than what you think. And so, yes, you're called to impact the one, but the Spirit of God in you is, uh, is ready, is going to use you to reach many more people than you could have imagined. So if that is true, what is our response? Well, our response is to yield ourselves to the Lord. It's to say, Lord, Holy Spirit, I need you to fill me. I need you to fill me not just today, but every moment I need you to fill me. When we wake up tomorrow morning, Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. Fill me. Listen, I pray that the, the Lord would awaken us to the beauty and the power of his will, that the Lord would open our eyes to see his original design for every believer, for you and for me and for every disciple. So let's pray a few things. Let's pray that God would even increase that yearning in our hearts to be filled with the Holy Spirit and that that, that yearning would be so strong that we would not allow any barriers. We would not allow anything in our hearts that would keep us from the fullness of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Let's refute every lie for whatever reason, the lie that says you can't, you won't, you're not enough. Let's refute every lie. And let's also reject the lie that says that we can never really live full of the Holy Spirit at all times. Let's surrender to God's plan and let's agree with Jesus that we are indeed called to do what he did and even greater works. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to glorify Jesus on the earth and to accomplish the work that he has given us to do. And let's rejoice in the fact that God has entrusted us and equipped us to be a part of this appointed time where multitudes will come to Jesus, will begin to follow him and they will too do his works. I want to pray for you. Father God, how amazing it is that the same Holy Spirit in Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that has been sent to fill us. So we yield ourselves. We yield ourselves right now wherever you are. Maybe you're in the car and you can't lift your hands or you shouldn't since they're on the steering wheel, but you can still yield yourself by saying, Oh Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. Come on, let him know. I yield myself to you. Fill me, lead me, empower me. Give me eyes to see the people around me. And Lord, give me the boldness to minister with the power of the Holy Spirit that will come with love, with truth, with grace, but with authority and with strength to see miracles take place. Lord, thank you. We receive your call. And we agree with you right now. You need to receive the call to do the works that Jesus did in greater. 
This is not reserved for a certain group. This is for every believer. But unless you receive that personally for yourself and agree with Jesus that that is what you're called to do, you will never walk in it. So right where you are, say, Jesus, I agree with you. The works that you did and even greater, I will do. Come on, say it again. Jesus, the works that you did and even greater, I will do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you that we get to be a part of this appointed time where the greatest ingathering of harvest will take place and you will use us, men and women, children, full of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for it. Amen and amen.